All right. Good afternoon, folks. And it is that time of the week. It is the Marketplace and Jumpstart Reset Show. I'm Anthony Weeks, your host uh, and executive producer, joined by my colleagues, both Linda and Carolyn, uh, who are contributors and co-hosts. They're responsible for the Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. And we today we're going to circle back. And this is the continuation part two of the how do I qualify for the Paycheck Protect Protection Program, better known as PPP, Forgiveness Loan uh, Program. But today we have, we're also going to address the Economic Injury uh, Disaster Loan Program. We're going to have representatives from the SBA office out of New York. Uh, they're going to be on, not on this segment, uh, we're going to, we have part one, as well, we have part two and part three. Uh, and so part three, we'll have those members of the SBA on the show with us and uh, along with our colleagues as well from uh, Terry Coxham as well. Uh, and this, so today's in the, this particular segment, my colleagues, both Linda and Carolyn are the host and co-host for the health and wellness segment. And so they have uh, brought back by popular demand, uh, Margarita uh, Chang, uh, we call her Rita. So if you hear if you hear us call her Rita, it's it's a Margarita Rita, just for short. And we're really glad because th this is uh, a continuation, part two, of what we started. Um, I think a, a few weeks ago, uh, you you responded very well to it. Uh, you demanded, well, let me not say demanded, but you you re requested uh, to be able to have a, a round two of this. And today's program uh, is going to be designed and built in having an expert uh, who's gonna provide a, a wealth of information and hopefully answer a lot of questions. Don't forget, this is interactive. This is television, but it's not just television, it's also social media interactive. So all of the questions you have, any, any comments you have uh, as we are live, you're able to participate by sharing your questions and comments and thoughts on the program and we will present them and have try to our best of our ability to answer all your questions. So thank you so much for being part of the Marketplace and Jumpstart Reset show. And I am going to ask my colleagues, both Linda and Carolyn, to just say hi, and then let's jump right into it, roll our sleeves up because we have a lot of work. Margarita, welcome back to the program. Thank you so much for having me. So excited to be here. Fantastic. Well, hi. And then we're going to jump right into it. Carolyn, you got your high. We got our, we got our, 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 our <laughs> put on our roller skates because, as you mentioned, there is quite a bit of information to cover and the work that still needs to go forward in educating the public around, particularly our small businesses, our independent contractors, our sole proprietors, our mid sized businesses, and anyone who continues to need and continues to have challenges funding their payroll due to coronavirus, the money is still available. And that's what we want to convey. And we want to convey how and why in the process. And so we have Marguerite to, to be our resident expert. And we thank you so much for coming back as I think it was a demand. We were demanded to bring you back. How about that? Absolutely. And that's good. And by popular demand. So <laughs> Carolyn, I know you've got a wonderful introduction to Marguerite. Love to hear it. Well, Margarita is uh, an incredible um, CFP, and she will explain what that means. And since she's been on the show, she has been really working the circuit. Most recently, she was featured um, one of the featured panelists on Asian Women Who Boss Up. So, as a certified financial planner, Margarita has been helping many small businesses get access to PPP round one. So when round two came out, we're going to hit her with the very first questions. If you didn't know about this or if you felt you didn't qualify, tune in. So Margarita, to start off, can you give us a high level view? What actually is the PPP program? Sure. So PPP stands for Paycheck Protection Program. And you may think, well, I don't really give myself a paycheck. And that very well may be true particularly if we look at women entrepreneurs and women entrepreneurs of color, something like I wanna say 97.1% of women entrepreneurs of color 
don't necessarily have W-2 employees. Why is that important? Because in the past, you may have felt, mm, this doesn't apply to me. Well, I have news for you. The first news is the deadline has been extended. So when I was on the show before, it was March 10th, and we had exactly 21 days till the end of March. And I got to tell you, I think it's important for me to be candid. I said a prayer. I was like, my goodness, folks are feeling so overwhelmed just trying to keep the lights on. I really think people need more time. I said prayers. And when I woke up, I found out that the, that uh, there was an extension till May 31st. And I was like, now folks are still getting ready doing their taxes. There's also uh, a tax filing extension. Um, so you do have a little bit more time, which is good. So I don't want you to think that you missed the deadline. So who is eligible? Here is who's eligible. If you are an independent contractor, self-employed, sole proprietorship with no employees. So you could be a DJ, hairstylist, makeup artist, freelance writer, um, resume writer. You get the picture here. So first independent contractors. Next, sole proprietorship. So self-employed with employees corporations, um, so that would be LLCs, partnerships, but this is really important, nonprofits, community-based organizations, you are also eligible. Um, you know, this is a situation where there may be um, a reduction in funding from other sources and you have increased demand for your services. So basically, all of these groups of people would be uh, eligible, but we're gonna focus today on um, the independent contractors because sometimes people felt that this didn't apply to them or they weren't eligible. Well, Outstanding. Very good. And I think that's a really good point because sometimes we miss opportunities for that reason. As you mentioned, things seem overwhelming for us. And as a result, we're like, well, that's just for big companies or others, but the fact that you qualified it, if you never gave yourself a W-2, and that's something in the event planning world that I had to bring to the attention of a lot of small catering companies and a lot of DJs in particular. DJs, it's a gig economy. So these people who did these gigs had all kinds of questions around it. So I'm glad you cleared that up in terms of who is eligible. And then uh, one of the questions we wanted to ask you is, what makes this opportunity so different? Because when people hear SBA loan, you think, oh, no, who has time? It's a loan. It's, we know how we constantly get turned down you know, certain uh, segments of the population. So what makes this opportunity different than before? So what makes this so special? And I do want you to tune in to hear from the folks with the SBA. I believe it's the SBA New York Metro office. But what makes PPP so special is the interest rate at 1%. Um, the other thing that makes it very special is you do not need to have collateral. But I would say the third thing that probably is the most important is if you do um, get approved for a loan, provided you keep proper documentation, this loan would be forgiven. So typically, many people who participate in the gig economy have not had access to credits or these type of loans. Um, I tell people the worst case scenario is you have to pay a loan back at 1%. Um, that's far better than you know credit card debt or more expensive uh, lines of credit. Absolutely. And welcome, Gwinnett. Welcome, Gwinnett. So if you have a question, just unmute yourself. And, you know, when we think about the fact that if they don't have a W-2, um, how would they demonstrate that they, in fact, had income? What would they be able to provide by way of documentation? Sure. So, uh, you know, this is my second time doing this, um, and I made sure that I prepared paperwork. So what every I'm going to go through the documentation that everybody needs. So everybody would need a copy of their driver's license. Mm -hmm. Everybody would need a void check. Now, if you don't have actual physical checks, I understand that's common. Um, your financial institution 
may be able to help you get um, documentation, verifying account ownership, routing number, and um, account number. So everyone needs to provide a driver's license, so your photo ID, void check. Um, for people who are don't receive a paycheck, what you want to do is you need to provide your Schedule C, and I have a Schedule C right here. Schedule C is part of your tax return. And the Schedule C, line number 31 is the net profit. So you do have to, you know, provide your Schedule C and then your bank statement. That Schedule C is kind of your proof of payroll. And that bank statement needs to be from February 2020. Now, the other thing that's interesting is, remember, I said everybody needs to provide the driver's license, void check, and bank statement of February 2020. Um, so I'm just going to stop there to see if you have any questions. Then I'll say, like, what paperwork. Um, well, well, we'll tell us people. that that's a very good um, demarcation line in terms of the actual bank statement. Is there a particular reason? I mean, I think I know, but I just want to not assume so that. Um, like others who are applying for PPE, if in fact um, that we want to provide the right information. And so why the February 2020 statement versus any other statements like your current statement or, you know, when you started your business, what's significant about that particular date? So sure. Um, in the beginning, uh, we mentioned that you may be eligible. The people who would not be eligible is for people who started their businesses after February 2020. And what's the significance? Um, that's really when the pandemic started to hit. So you need to um, provide your bank statement um, from February 2020. And then to qualify, you know, you need to demonstrate, and it's certainly not that hard. You can do quarter by quarter, or you can do for the whole year that you have been negatively impacted um, by COVID-19. The other thing that you must do and I think I mentioned this last time, but I think it's worth mentioning it again, is you need to attest that you need these funds to continue to stay in business. The other thing that I also think is worth mentioning, um, you may not have applied for PPP round one. Mm -hmm. If you didn't apply for PPP round one, that's okay, you can apply round two. And if you did apply for PPP round one, you can, if you meet the criteria, apply for PPP round two and round three. So you are allowed to do that. It's just, you would not be eligible to um, submit your application if you started your business after February, 2020. And if the pandemic has been so extraordinary for you and you've declared bankruptcy, you wouldn't be able to you know, apply. Um, but you do need to attest that you need these funds um, to be able to survive and sustain your business. And is that a separate document or is that a document that the, the uh, financial provider provides um, or is that a statement that would be typed out by the individual business owner to say I attest to the fact that I need these funds? Is it something as simple or something as more formal um, or does it vary from provider to provider? Well, sure. I know I've helped several women um, entrepreneurs apply for PPP loans in some of these companies weren't your traditional banks, but they were fintech. So um, the application was very intuitive and it was part of the application, meaning they didn't have to write a personal statement. They needed to enter their revenue and demonstrate which quarter uh, had the most significant loss. And then at the end, when they're submitting, I hereby certify that everything I have provided is accurate to my knowledge and I um, attest that I do need these funds to be able to stay in my business. So the providers that I've worked with, the people didn't really have to write a statement or create something. They just had to check and then like initial in those boxes. Outstanding. And that brings to mind um, the fact that we have a very fluid online process for our listeners and our viewers if they go to www apply ppe.info. It's crawling right there in front uh, for everyone to see if you're viewing through Facebook or other online mediums. Again, www.apply 
dot info info. So I'll turn it over to my other colleagues because I've got more questions, but I'm going <laughs> to let them break in. I'm just a, you know inquisitive about this whole entire process because I think it's fantastic that we do have these resources that are available to the small businesses and the practitioners who somehow by what we call hook or crook, they managed to weather the last 12 months and now really do need to kind of bring themselves out of uh, their debt or bring themselves or bring their employees back in full force to make a difference in their community and in certainly their business and their family. So I applaud um, the efforts that you and others in this financial service field are doing to convey and to spread the word mm -hmm. that we still have plenty of opportunity. We don't want individuals to wait. We do want them to be proactive. And now we have some detailed information uh, and a platform in which they can actually apply uh, that detailed information around gathering your um, your documentation um, and being forward with that. My final question before we turn over to the other uh, co-host oh. is you had mentioned the Schedule C. Now, the Schedule C is not an independent document. Some may, who are not as familiar with the Schedule C, they cannot complete that independently. Is that correct? I just want to make sure that it's known that it's part of your full um, filing report to the IRS. Sure. So the Schedule C is part of your tax return. And you can't, so you, I will confirm what you said. You can't say, hey, I want to go online, do my taxes and submit a Schedule C. It is part of your tax return. So you do want to um, complete your taxes. People do ask me this question. So this comes up. Should I use 2019 numbers or should I use 2020? You actually can use either. Um, if you have a greater need, I would encourage you to use two, 2020 numbers. However, if that means that you are not going to be able to submit your application, because I understand, I'm a business owner too. I have clients who are business owners. Um, I don't want you to think, well, I don't have 2020 numbers done, so I can't submit my application. So you do want to uh, make sure that you are submitting the um, Schedule C for either tax year 2019, because I know you've done those. If you haven't completed 2020, remember you do have the, the tax filing deadline has been extended to May 15th. And the PPP deadline is May 31st. You don't want to wait till the last minute. Um, so, yes, I hope I answered your question about the schedules. That was perfect. And then some. So thank yeah. you for that, Rita. And, so, and I know that how are things going for you in Florida? I know last time you were sharing this information with a lot of your colleagues and fellow um, business professionals. How are things going there? Well, I, I've been getting a lot of questions. And so um, I have a lot of questions just on my phone in front of me, hoping that I capture everyone's question that needs to be asked. But I think if I could summarize maybe what you're asking, we have a lot of uh, the, the first set of folks that I put this through to were people who are um, really, really small business. They are, you know, single person, um, entrepreneurs, maybe food vendors. I I know you guys talked about DJs and, and those others in the gig economy earlier. This is specifically ear, geared to them because I think when they kept hearing, you know, pay your employees, um, they've, they probably felt like this was not for them. So I really want to underscore that this is for them because I know quite a few people who are food vendors who have lost significant incomes because they just weren't able to do the festivals. So I really want to reiterate to them that this program can apply for them. Um, I know that most of their income was in 2019. They, some of them had nothing in 2020. Um, in speaking to them after the program, I realized how bad it actually was for them because they were accustomed to earning a significant income through the festivals. So I just want you to reiterate, if you could, that they don't have to have employees. They are their employees, you know, if, if we could touch a bit on that. Absolutely. So there are, and Carolyn can attest to this because in the event planning business, um, there haven't been events. And so it is florists, DJs, caterers, um, photographers, so many people have been affected. So 
um, for people in food and hospitality and travel, it is automatic. They would be eligible to receive three and a half times um, because of their NAICS code. NAICS code refers to a specific business code. But just to reiterate, for people who are solopreneurs, they are the employer and the employee. This They are eligible to submit an application and apply. They are independent contractors, um, self-employed. Uh, they have thriving, well, I mean, I know before the pandemic, thriving mm -hmm. enterprises, and they can submit an application. So they would need um, their driver's license, a void check, their Schedule C. And if they have self-employment income from more than one source, they should include all of their Schedule Cs or all of their schedules. Mm -hmm. um, if there's more than one source of Schedule C income, they would just need to submit one application. The reason why is each one of those schedules flows into their individual tax return. And so, yes, um, I do encourage them to apply. And the last thing I'll say about this is if you are feeling overwhelmed, if the only thing you do today is scan your driver's license, get a void check or that, or contact your financial institution for mm -hmm. that letter and get your bank statement together, you are almost ready to submit. So I tell people, just break it down. Um, it, you know, set aside a little bit of a top time. And if today the only thing you do is get organized and scan your paperwork, um, you are, um, progressing in the process to submit your application. That's and, and excellent, uh, Rita. And to that point, exactly. If they go right now to www.applyppp.info and start to just start the process online with the amazing solution tool that we have right now, it's going to at least catch them, capture their information, and then it will send tickler reminders. So you can't get it done until you start. The toughest part is starting. So even if they don't have anything scanned, if they can at least start with that, that gets them in queue and that gets them going. So, you know, it's interesting when you say that, Carolyn, because um, this is a question and then we know that the platform uh, applied PPP uh, info has the ability to provide this information. The question becomes, how do I determine how much I qualify for? Exactly how much should I ask for, or is it an ask, or is it something that's told to me that I will qualify for this amount based on my Schedule C? Um, how do we know what possibly will be that magical number that will return back to us with a successful application? So sure. So right now we are focusing on people who are self-employed, independent contractors, solopreneurs, part of the gig economy. So the amount of money that you will qualify for is what is on your Schedule C. And if you have more than one Schedule C, you can add up that number. And, you know, I tell people the, the these um, tools, online tools will kind of do that calculation for you. And so you're not required to take the whole amount. Um, if you do take the whole amount, you know, we're going to get to this point uh, part later. So I don't want to um, jump ahead too much. You want to make sure you don't commingle those funds um, and, and you set them aside so that you can qualify for loan forgiveness. So to answer your question, the amount that you are approved for would be determined based on the data that you're providing. Gwinnett, what was that next question you didn't want to miss? Did that answer your first question? That actually, it, it really did, because I think that what might be happening is is more fear than anything else um in terms of fear of the process i mean i i, I was a person who was afraid of, of math in college so i i get that you know sometimes just fear of the unknown for people will cause them not to apply and i think you guys made a good point just get started with the process the monies are out there for for folks 
I have a question here with what's the difference between PPP and the EDL. I think we may have covered that, but let me let me ask it. And what are the benefits of the two different types? So sure. So the EDL, which is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, they're also through the SBA and PPP. You're allowed to, in certain situations, apply for both. But today we're like focused on PPP. The one mm -hmm. thing that I can say is you can't commingle. What I mean by commingle is if you do find yourself eligible and you receive funds from both, you want to make sure that you can account for those funds. And you can't double dip. So I, I know I said you can't commingle, meaning don't put them all together. That'll just cause confusion. It seems straightforward today, April, but you know, as you're busy in your business, you know, you might forget. So don't commingle the funds. The other thing when I said you can't do double dip is Let's just say, so for PPP, those funds need to be, um, to qualify for loan forgiveness, you need to use those funds um, for paychecks. It could be your paycheck. It could also be your staff's. Okay. But anything you also need to do to keep your um, self, your employees, and your customers safe so you can use it for PPP. E. You can use PPP funds for <laughs> PPE, so mm -hmm. that's cleaning products, masks, um, plexiglass, and so forth. You just can't say to yourself, you know what, I installed plexiglass between cubicles, and that cost 20 grand. Um, you can't take that expense and use idle dollars for it and also use your PPP dollars. So you can qualify for both. Well, um, I encourage um, viewers to tune in to listen to the next segment because we'll, they'll talk more about you know the idle, the uh, economic injury disaster loan. Um, typically when we think idle, um, I know as a certified financial planner, when I think idle economic injury disaster, I'm thinking like hurricanes, right? But COVID, uh, you know, it's it's a disaster. It was a disaster in so it's many disaster. right. It, it is a disaster. It's extraordinary. So a lot of people think, well, I thought that was only for like earthquakes or fires or or uh, hurricanes. Um, you know, I didn't lose my home. Um, I did lose business, but does this constitute an economic? Does it, it, did I experience um, economic injury from this disaster? And yes, you did. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. And I, I was thinking along those lines, what we're encouraging people today by asking them to go to www.applyppp.info is to your application, you going in and submitting at this qualified professional secure site is going to be, you're in effect asking. And if one thing we know for sure, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. And in the event space, that I had to reach out and tell my balloon artists, stilt walkers, fire dancers, face painters, t-shirt vendors, food truck operators, uh, and everybody else that did anything to impact, she mentioned photographers, photo booth operators, mm -hmm. anybody that had a gig around the event space. I said, I know you think that was a real business that provided for you and your families. You don't think you qualify and you think they're going to be looking at credit and they're going to be looking at your background. And if you ever had a challenge in the past, that's not where this goes. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. And if you don't start that actual, that portal, www.applyppp.info, that portal is going to let you know whether you qualify. So you're going to get an answer right away that says mm -hmm. qualify or I don't qualify. And then that will give you the green light to move ahead and get yourself paid. Mm -hmm. So when we come back from the commercial, because I see that Anthony is here, you know, let's get a little bit of history because we're all taxpayers and we want to know how is this being funded and therefore, the, you know, what is our uh, line of sight on how to be responsible business owners in the future and what kinds of things that we might be able to um, build into our business infrastructure that will uh, soften our blow should we ever have a situation like this or any other impact to our, our companies. 
Anthony, are you are you here to ask yeah. questions or yeah, no, no, take no. us to we the did, break? No, this is the top of the hour. We do, we do need to take a station ID break and we'll be right back. Awesome. PPP became the gap. Seriously, the line between open and close. Hi, I'm Randy Wistoff, director of the Kansas City Zoo. We were able to receive a PPP loan through working with a local bank. The SBA loan has helped us at the perfect time to be able to make payroll. The PPP loan helped us um, in a way where we did not have to uh, sacrifice our personal savings. Thanks to PPP loans, Group Living is able to be providing needed services to people who have no mental disabilities. Hi, this is Claire Otto with Sugar Divas Bakery. Uh, PPP money has helped us uh, bring the entire team back. So with the PPP loan, what it's done is it's really helped us keep our pivot going and keep our people working. Uh, the PPP has certainly uh, helped stabilize this company. It has allowed us to be sure that each employee uh, would receive his or her normal take-home pay uh, so that they're able to carry on with their lives. My name is Chris Ayers, and I'm the president of A-List Limousine and Transportation. Because of the SBA loan, we were able to bring most of our employees back, and we're excited to say that we're making a difference in our community. Long story short, PPP came along, allowed us to Volvo, bring back furloughed workers. Uh, the PPP loan helped us expedite the process of bringing our weekend employees back quickly so they were only out for a month. We're happy to report the zoo is open again. We couldn't have done this without the help of the SBA and the PPP loan. It relieved the pressure off of having to meet a certain sales goal. Things just popped quick. We now have up to 13 people working, and that is within, I'm going to say, about a seven-day period. And we're able to do that because of the PPP. Um, you know, we were able to keep uh, all of our staff thanks to the PPP loan that we were able to secure. The PPP loan, um, we applied for it and we got it, which has been incredibly helpful. Once the PPP came in, we, we were, I was super excited because the funds were there to take care of staff. The PPP coming in was a huge release. And so if not for the PPP, we would have really suffered. It would have been horrible. We were able to bring back dozens of employees much earlier than, you know, had we not had PPP. Yeah, if it wasn't for that program, I don't know where we would be right now. Because it, it took a lot of weight off of us. And the PPP really um, has been instrumental in helping us uh, fill that gap. Having that pay tech, um Paycheck, Paycheck protection. protection has actually really took some stress off of them as well. It was, PPP was a true lifeline. Thank you for what you do for America. So thank you so much to everybody. Thanks, SBA. The Paycheck Protection Program has been an incredibly successful federal disaster response. Thanks to the president's leadership. If you're a small local business and you have not yet applied for your PPP forgiveness loan, you should know the deadline is fast approaching and you need to apply now before May 31st, 2021. To apply now, go to www.applyppp.org. Folks, we are back. Thank you so much. If somebody has a speaker on, turn on the speaker. Thank you. We are back, and this is the Marketplace and Jumpstart Research Show. I'm Anthony Weeks, executive producer and host. But today you're not hearing from me because I'm not important. The experts are important, and the questions, your questions are super important. And today we are trying our best to answer a lot of the questions that you've asked, you submitted. Um, you know, like one of my colleagues, I believe Linda said, yes. 
there was uh, we brought back an expert who was asked and is backed by popular demand, mm -hmm. Margarita uh, Cheng, yes. on the uh, her knowledge of the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, Forgiveness Loan Program. And don't forget uh, on our third segment, not on this segment, we will have representative, official representative from the Small Business Administration uh, on the program on segment number three. That's a different show. That's from 2.30 to 3.30. And you'll hear, you'll get to hear from the SBA themselves because the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, as well as the Economic Injury Disaster Loan is a program that is funded and administered by the SBA. We, the lenders, are just a conduit, a facilitator, a facility of the funds being made available to you because you can't, well, uh, I, I was about to say you can't go directly. Uh, the the idle loan, you can go directly to, to the SBA, uh, but for PPP, you have to go through a lending institution. And so we are one of the lending uh, institutions that are providing uh, the PPP forgiveness loan. And again, you can go to www.apply. I'm sorry, www.applyppp.info. Again, that's www.applyppp.info. And you can start and submit your loan application. And today we are doing our best to answer a lot of the questions you may have on the program. So let's get back to uh, our guest, uh, Margarita. Wait, wait. Yeah, Melinda. 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 And, and Gwinnett, what was your next question? There we go. I was like, where there are we? Go, Linda. I was in backstage. I was were you in the naughty chair, something. Linda? Were you in the naughty? Or were you in the I naughty? was in the naughty chair on the you know, <laughs> Linda, get me off the naughty list, please. All right, great. <laughs> it's our joke. <laughs> Okay, so Margarita, one of the other questions we have is that um, people are asking if most of their so employees are um, 1099, do, are those people still considered employees because those are independent contractors and that was most of their payroll? So I definitely can answer that question, but first, I really loved the uh, break and how we got to hear from so many business owners. Mm -hmm. And even before I heard them speak, I'm like, PPP is a lifeline and it was so amazing to hear that so i want to say that i understand the fear is real people are afraid of rejection and um i just want to tell you all that some of the concerns have been addressed um meaning we know that um people have student loans and those who decided to take advantage of um not making loan payments, um, they are no longer negatively impacted. So um, I think that's really important mm -hmm. for people who are delinquent on their student loans, that is not going to be a barrier to submitting a PPP application. So yes. that's very important. Yes. Now, as far as um, entrepreneurs who don't have payroll, but they have people they work with who are also entrepreneurs. Those entrepreneurs, so those contractors, independent contractors they work with, they in turn would apply for PPP loan mm -hmm. on their own. So I, I'll make sure mm -hmm. that I explain this nicely. Let's say you're an event planner, right, Carolyn? And you work with face painter, magician, um, cupcakery. Those people um, are a big part of your network and they um, help you deliver an amazing experience to your clients. In this case, this event planner would submit his, her, or their PPP loan application just based on their W-2 employees. If they don't have any W-2 employees and it's just based on themselves. And then those contract workers, so or contract vendors or um, entrepreneurs would each submit their own PPP application. So 1099 uh, people are, that you work with and compensate on a 1099 basis wouldn't be part of your payroll. 
And I know that's a long answer, but sometimes I, I want to make sure that I'm thorough because sometimes if you don't answer the question carefully, it creates more confusion. So I was like, in this case, both the um, both sets of entrepreneurs would be eligible. Mm -hmm. So well, can I go back to something you, oh, go. did you want to do a follow-up? I, no, I just wanted to say um, to just, put a period on, on her sentence, they would be eligible, but separately applying individually. You got it. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. So we don't want those smaller businesses. And that's what, so a lot of the time I had to reach out to the, the different connecting parts, because when you're doing mega events, grand openings for whether it's for Metro or something else, and it takes a whole lot of pieces, a whole lot of vendor partners to make that happen. Those are not my vendor. Those are vendor partners, but those are each established gig workers. Mm -hmm. So my business would speak on behalf of my own business, but I've actually had to reach out. And even during the course of this program, I had someone from a cakery who had not bothered to apply for PPP that it was a significant portion of her income in 2019, 2020 yielded no income. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they were thinking, well, I don't need to apply. Nothing happened in 2020. So I think you made a point about 2019. And I, Gwinnett asked a question about it. And Gwinnett, if I don't hit this, if you can hit this right. If, in fact, 2019 was a very good year and you have the paperwork and the tax returns, to, uh, your Schedule C to demonstrate that. And yet 2020 was the catastrophe that we know because my event planning company experienced a 98% business loss mm -hmm. because of uh, the lack of events. So wouldn't I want to use the 2019 figure when my business was vibrant versus the one when it was on a respirator? And I, I hate to use that yeah. analogy, but and that's 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 exactly the same issue that that I'm coming with because um, we did we did a lot of festivals, large festivals, and had a lot of vendors who you know earned sometimes ten thousand dollars at a festival, and that was 2019, 2020, absolutely nothing because all of the large festivals were gone, and so as as I start back now talking to them. And, and they're, we're starting to do some, I am just surprised at how little they received when they actually applied. And I know that it could be a couple of things that people have to be aware of. Maybe they were not um, putting all of, of the money they made. Um, they were not reporting it all at tax time, you know, and people have to be aware that if you did not, then that's that's a problem that you're going to have when, when you try to get the loan now. So report correctly, folks, because if, this, if there's one lesson we learned from this, report correctly. Um, but for the general ones who did report it, they really uh, should apply for this because they earned a good income. They definitely should. And to that point, when you are filling out your application, um, you need to demonstrate so you can say, hey, Q1. 2019. Here's what I made. Here's what I made Q1 2020. Here's what I made Q2 2019. Here's what I made Q2 2020 each quarter. If you don't want to do it for each quarter, that's fine. You can do it for the whole year. Um, but they even, they might think, well, you know what? I don't qualify. I didn't make any money in 2020. This is why it's good to have your 2020 numbers work on your 2020 numbers so that you can demonstrate there is a loss. I mean, even if we look at your February 2020 statement and your tax trend, that's real for people. And the other thing I just want to make sure that I um, reference in this discussion is um, as, if there's one thing we've learned, yes, as business owners, you have revenue, right? And you incurred expenses to generate that revenue. And th that is tax deductible, meaning you have your revenue and you have your expenses. And that's what helps you reach line item number 31, which is net. So it's really important that you do keep good records. Um, in this case, if you have food vendors that were just rocking it in 2019 and 2020 was horrible, they are allowed to present that data, but just make sure that they are demonstrating which quarter 
was the most difficult. And if it was difficult mm-hmm. for the whole year, then what that overall loss is. And that's good because people might be thinking in terms of um, seasonal because, you know, with some events, it's that, all right, it's it's more summer. So guys, just understand, put it into the quarter. Um, it, it does speak to you. And this is just me speaking to some of the folks who are listening. Um, seasonal and and just just put it by quarter. That's that's how that's how you'll be able to tell. And isn't it still true that we can, or it's new this year, also look at a different line, um, gross revenue versus net profit, which might present a, a better financial scenario for the applicant. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yes, absolutely. So there are new rules for the self-employed. And as we're talking about gig uh, uh, workers applying for PPP. And so I made sure, you know, this is my second time back, but I made sure that I looked at everything. It's important that, um, so as I mentioned, in addition to the net income line on the 1040 Schedule C, um, that includes deductions. And those deductions well, they reduce your taxes, right? Because they reduce your income. They reduced or eliminated the amount for some leading to some very small loans. So the SBA has released two application forms. And I just want to say the name of the form. Form 2483C. Those applying for their first draw PP loan. And form 2483 SDC for the second draw. The SD stands for second draw. So those forms may be able to help people who find themselves in that situation. Um, Previously, um, people who filed Schedule C would have to work with line number 31. That's the net income. But now you can provide line seven, which is the gross income. And I'm just going to look at the form really fast. So line seven would be gross, right? Gross income. So your gross sales. And then you have all of these expenses, which would be line 28. So if you take line seven minus line 28, line 31 is your net. So to your point, if your net is low and it doesn't really allow you to qualify for a meaningful amount, you can also look or because you're going to be providing this to your lender, right? As part of the underwriting process, they will look at line seven, which is gross. So that's why I made sure I prepared this form. We got line seven, line 28, and then line 31. Great question, Linda. Great question, because that's helpful. And the other thing um, along that line, so using that gross figure is important. And you're giving us excellent information, and we're happy about that. And in this case, the lender that we want people to apply to is www.applyppp.info, because this trusted site, which we are here representing, um, which is one of the fifth largest Uh, providers of PPP loans in the United States of America. It's here. It's ready. It's robust. They can get started right now. Indeed. And I think what we're trying to emphasize here is that there is still time. We are not, you know, we were thinking, oh my goodness, someone said, well, the deadline's already passed. It was the 31st of March. And we're like, No, it's not the 31st of March. It is continuing on until the 31st of May. And as you pointed out, Rita, it's really important to have your information as it relates to your taxes because that's due on May 15th. So there has been a tremendous government response in terms of supporting what we know to be one of the lifelines of our economy, and that is the small and gig economy small businesses and the gig, those who are in what we call the gig um, gig businesses. And even those who have pivoted away from that, uh, who are now not business owners, but are, have became employees and then impacted by that new opportunity, hopefully will qualify and be able to come back into their work environments one way or the other. 
I think the point here is that we've all suffered an impact from COVID. It's as Carolyn said in her event management company. And you know, I'm sure Gwinnett, you have had um, you have seen this impact with your, your clients, and certainly I have in my business. We have a resource that in this part of the history of our country, this will be one of those moments where we can say coronavirus was, the pandemic was horrific mm -hmm. and it created a true catastrophic scenario for many, many, many people. And it will be years to come and, and really re-energize in our economy in such a way that we can look back and say we're past it. But this is one of the strategies, one of the ways that we can implement the ability to recover. And that's what these are designed for. And so with that understanding, how did the government come to be in a position to do this? What were some of those um, that the foundation um, outside of it being a great idea for the first it. wave, the second and the now, I guess this would be considered the third wave opportunity with some changes. And Linda, before we, can I ask one question just before, just slip sure. one more thing in there. And the question is, Rita, we've been referring to this as you said, the loan can be forgivable. It can be forgiven because I think a lot of people are, look, we're already struggling. I don't want to take a loan that I'm going to have to, you know, it's a loan. How am I going to pay it back? So what portion of this would be forgivable if I get a PPP loan and I use it 100% for payroll? how much do I have to pay back to the government? And then if you can answer that quickly so that you can get to um, the questions that Linda was asking, because they're very... Well, then that sparked a different question in me. So <laughs> I got one more after that as it relates to yours, Carolyn. So, so sure, I, I understand. So there's a lot of fear here. And I think it's important to just acknowledge it. People fear, you know, I'm trying to keep the lights on in my business. I'm trying to homeschool my kids. I'm trying to care give for um, people in my community. Why would I spend time applying for a loan only to be rejected? Right? That's real. And if I get this loan, how in the world am I going to pay it back? Why would I want to apply for a loan when like my revenue is down? That's ridiculous. Like, how is that helpful? We've heard that question so many yeah. times. Yes, I, that, that one I've gotten to because for some people, <laughs> they're looking at they're, like even for me, I'm looking at my model of business, and I'm sure Carolyn is the same. And it's like the, the economy still isn't really ready for us to 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 launch back out. So what do we do? I mean. Um, and, and I know learning from you guys is it, it can be used to maybe amend your business within your industry, right? And you still qualify um, for that loan forgiveness. But that is a, a real fear. I, my industry is not back up. I need the money, but how how do I really justify that I'm spending? How would you pay money? it back if your economy is not up? And, and therefore, yeah. Rita, you have a great answer, I know, because you're so educated and this has been fantastic. So tell us. So what happens? Mean, I think about like uh, the conversation I'm having with clients. So, you know, I'm struggling to read. So why in the world would I apply for a loan? Because that's just creating another problem. Like I'm going to have to pay something, even though I'm struggling. I like that. I don't owe anybody money. I, I don't want to ruin my credit. So I haven't answered your question. So SBA, um, you know, the government recognizes that small business is very important. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say is, you know, the pandemic, I don't like to say this word, but it's okay to say it is truly unprecedented. So there's differences between wave one, wave two, wave three, and there've been reiterations along the way. So here's what I mean by reiterations. Um, you know, a lot of businesses, particularly in communities of color, you know, there may be people who um, are a little bit skeptical of the government. They're a little bit skeptical of financial institutions, even if they are not a citizen, but they are documented, they can use an EIN and they would be eligible to apply. These are the convenience stores, the eateries, the hair salons, that's really important. Um, so um, as we've learned, it is imp you're not gonna know whether you're approved unless you go on the portal and submit your application. And then what makes this so special is no personal guarantee. So you don't need to have collateral, right? 
your, this loan will be approved and the amount that you will be approved is going to be a function of the um, information that you submit related to your business. So the system, if you will, will calculate the amount that you're eligible to receive. Then once you receive that money, you know, put it in a separate account. You know, you can open an online account and you want to account for that. If you, this is a really good example. If you are an eatery and you have a storefront, but you didn't have a website and you use that money to improve your web presence, or well, um, that is what you need to do to keep your business um, in business. And so you do have to make sure that you're using the bulk of this money um, to protect um, payroll. So payroll protection program. But remember, if you don't have any employees, you are protecting your payroll and your individual livelihood and that of your family. So just make sure that you are, you know, using your money wisely. Um, you know, it's not just the payroll, but things that you need. So it could be rents, uh, payroll, protective equipment, maybe a more efficient ordering system and so forth. So you want to make sure that you document and, that. So and is a portion I, of it forgiven, forgivable? That was, uh, if I do that, how much of that will I be forgiven? Exactly, Linda, that's exactly what I was. So provided you follow the criteria and you submit your application, your loan would be forgiven. Um, mm -hmm. 100%? 100%, 100% forgiven. So provided you use the money the way it was intended to be used. So for um, payroll protection, and remember, if you don't have any W-2 employees, you are the employee, you're the employee and employer. So you need to make sure that you're using that money to um, stay in business and keep people employed, including yourself. And so you are allowed to use that for rent, you're allowed to use that for protective equipment, um, but remember, you need to just make sure you're documenting. Here's what I mean by document. This is this is where people actually get tripped up. I printed out a lot of stuff here. This is exactly how people um, can um, jinx themselves, if you will. Get and into trouble. Get into trouble. Sorry, I had to pause here. So you need to make sure that... 60% of those funds must be used on payroll. And that could be payroll for yourself if you're solopreneur or your employees. Um, you also need to make sure that you are documenting your FTE. What's FTE? Full-time employees. You cannot take this money. Now, it's one thing if people decide not to come back, but you can't, you can't submit your application. Say, I had 20 full-time employees take the money, fire everyone and say, okay, I have 10 and expect to be forgiven. No, 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 no. That's a no, no. The other thing you can't do is you cannot take this money. Um, and let's say you have a sandwich shop and you see a sandwich shop a, a couple blocks down the road goes out of business. You can't take this money and, you know, buy someone else's sandwich shop. You need to be using this for what the money was intended to be used for. That's actually how people get tripped up okay. and the expenses. So. As mentioned, PPP, the main focus of this program is payroll and protecting jobs. Because if people have a job, they have money to spend, right? I know it seems silly, but it's true. Um, so the, these expenses will be forgiven provided you use these for payroll and things that you need to run your business. Rent, mortgage, utilities. Now, if you don't have rent and you're like a virtual business, what do you need to run your business? You need a good website. You need high-speed internet. Maybe you need Square, um, a way to accept payments and so forth. So this is what's really important. Those are things that can help uh, prevent you from missing on that opportunity to have your loan forgiven. Rita, this is why we had a demand for you to come back. I mean, we... The first time was as informative. I wrote a million and one notes, and now I've gotten to the place where I ran out of space in my <laughs> notebook 
and had to go to the back onto the, you know, I had to get to the last page, which was the inside. So thank you for coming back thank and you. sharing this wealth of knowledge. It's critical and we want to make sure that individuals have a way uh, to understand their ability to apply, apply. So go to www.appliedppp.info. A uh, new way of capturing your website information, www.applyppp.info. Rita, we're going to give you a round of applause. Thank you. Thank yes, you. I, I feel empowered to, to Thank you. hug. <laughs> I'm to Rita. Thank, Thank you so much. Uh, guys, this is the end of segment number one. Uh, we're going to, at from 2.30 to 3.30, it's going to be segment number three. And that's where we're going to have representative from the Small Business Administration out of the New York office. Uh, that we're going to have a an, a specialist on the show for PPP, and we'll have a specialist on from the SBA for the economic injury disaster loan. So be sure to tune in uh, from two thirty to three thirty when we have the SBA on the program. Ladies, thank you so much, and we will talk in a little bit. Thank you so much. Thank All you. Right. Guys. Good afternoon, everyone.